from the fighting on the streets of Shreveport to the war in Iraq to orthopedic surgeon. Iraq war veteran, Ebola doctor, and author. Dr. Growing up in Shreveport, Louisiana. A lot of my friends definitely went to prison. Um, most of them were killed or are currently in jail to this, to this day. Many of his friends he grew up with in Shreveport were killed or in prison. Even his own close relatives were in prison. Something clicked when he first saw his little brother there. He had an uh, orange jumpsuit on and came up to the window, and uh, I just broke down in tears because I was like my best friend. I think uh, after seeing my little brother in prison behind uh, prison walls uh, in his orange jumpsuit, and ever since that time, I made it uh, a pact to myself and made a little promise that I would stay out of trouble and um, try to reach my goals. So. Staying busy didn't keep trouble away from the web boys. Antonio's youngest brother, Jonathan, was a computer whiz. Actually, the FBI raided our house because of a uh, computer operation that he was running. What was he doing? Yeah. <laughs> At what age is he? I think he was uh, 14 or 15. 14 and the yeah. FBI is after? Yeah, they, they shut down the whole street and raided our house. What are you doing at 14 with a computer that would spark? After that ordeal, he um, started hanging around in the wrong crowd and um, he ended up going to jail for armed robbery um, at uh, 16 years old. They gave him juvenile life for armed robbery. And you go to jail to visit him? Yeah. And you're saying that was one of the toughest things you had to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just seeing him in prison, uh, walking up in an orange jumpsuit and chains, shackles on his feet and also his hands. But um, one thing I would never forget is his big smile that he had. So he never stopped smiling. So um, he uh, came up to the counter and he said he wanted to sing a song that he, he's been writing songs and writing raps, like a Christian song. Um, and uh, the song was called Love. Um, basically he started singing and basically tears ran down my eyes. I couldn't hold it in. Uh, just seeing him behind the wall, I couldn't hug him, couldn't touch him. Jonathan died in 2008. Photos in paint a picture of childhood. Antonio as a baby. Snapshots with grandma and his two brothers. Not many with his mom and sister. I'll say since I was younger, she's been in and out of the hospital maybe 30, 40 times, in and out of jail maybe 10, 15, 20 times. Um, so never knew why. I always um, just knew that something was a little bit off and something was wrong, so, but I never knew why. When did you figure out what was wrong? Four years ago. Four years ago? Yeah. And what's wrong? Uh, my mom and my sister have schizophrenia. Um, not a lot of people know this and um, don't talk about it a lot because um, I actually just found out about it when I was in medical school uh, learning about different psychiatric drugs. Um, she called one day and said she was taking her medicine, so I said, what medication are you taking? And she told me the name of the medication and it just hit me. Just remembered everything from the years of her trying to commit suicide and on drugs and in and out of the hospital. And I kind of put those two together and that's when I found out. Mom's trouble was Antonio's drive to work harder. Antonio followed in the footsteps of his older brother Chris and his father in the military. My dad's my uh, role model. Um, look up to him a lot. He. Um, had a troubled childhood himself, um, selling drugs and using drugs. Time. I mean, yeah. if you don't have that one person in the house that can put you on that right path, yeah. was it mentors? What do you say made the difference for you in your life? Um, I would say it was my father. My father, um, he had a really rough background also. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to prison when he was younger um, and um, selling drugs and using drugs. So, But he turned his life around and became a minister. So, um, and, and ever since that point, um, he was been my role model this is growing up and I look up to him and, and he, he's been there for me since then. And after SPAD, um, served, you're a veteran? Yes, Serving in, the, uh, in Iraq? Yes, I heard a big go over my head and hit the ground. Webb showed students the crater left by a rocket attack in what was dubbed Mortarville, where Webb served as a combat medic. The Webb credits the Air Force for helping his life take off. It allowed me to grow up as a man, uh, be more disciplined, more mature. Stateside, Webb went to classes at night at the University of Texas, got his college degree, then med school at Georgetown. But why do you think that you need to be a part of that to help and get your message out? Um, I think it's very important to let kids know that uh, we, I look just just like you. Uh, we're mm -hmm. from this, the same type of community, um, and a lot of people don't have the role model and people they can look up to. So I say they can look at me 
if I did it and go through all that, you can also. So. I was just going to say, because there are so many kids, like you said, that live in the same, that yeah. grow up in environments just like you, and you are much more relatable to yeah. them, other than some other speaker coming in and talking about, exactly. this is what you can do, this is what you did. Though. I was just going to say, because there are so many kids, like you said, that live in the same, that yeah. grow up in environments just like you, and you are much more relatable to yeah. them, other than some other speaker coming in and talking about, exactly. this is what you can do, this is what you did. Though. What's the one thing, the final message that yeah. you have for them? Um, I would say that um, no matter what your circumstance, uh, your environment, uh, however you were brung up, or um, you can uh, be successful um, as long as you work hard and keep God first. So I didn't let that stop me. I actually worked a lot harder. I read a lot longer. I studied a lot harder. Webb tells his life story in the book, Overcoming the Odds. These students were inspired by their in-person preview. October 28, 1982, I came into this world not knowing what the world held for me. As a little kid, I was told by a minister and a prophet that I would be something special one day. But I never would have imagined that I would have to go through the things that I did to get to this point. They say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Everything that I went through throughout my life made me the person who I am today. So I would say, never give up on your dreams and goals. I challenge each and every one of you to deep down, deep inside of yourself and find your inner self. It is this that will keep you going when times get hard, when people say it can't be done, when friends and family turn their back on you, when the only thing you want to do is reach your goals. In the end, perseverance and dedication will get you there. You just have to believe in yourself.